Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be uh, taking a look at um, a laptop which I'm currently doing up for, um, for a client. Um, <clears throat> this is a Toshiba something or other. <laughs> um, I, I really, it's a Oh, I can't. I really can't see what it is, but um, I will uh, no doubt put it in the title. Now, I thought I'd like to do a video on this because it's quite an interesting machine, if I'm honest. Uh, it, um, I do believe it was released on the cusp of Windows 10's release. And uh, it's not a bad little machine really I mean it's um, well it's whiter than your average pair of boxer shorts if I'm gonna be honest um, uh, so I do believe that instead of a DVD burner we have a BVD burner now nah, I'm kidding on uh, but uh, joking aside let's let's actually take a look at the machine so on the left hand side we have um, the uh, DCN, Ethernet port, USB 2 port, BVD burner, sorry, DVD burner. Um, on the front, as is the case with a lot of these machines, you really don't have much of anything. A couple of indicator LEDs. Um, on, on the right side, there's a wireless mouse receiver, um, but there's a card reader. Uh, what looks to be a headphone jack, two USB 3 ports, HDMI out, a Wii vent, and a Kensington lock slot. And on the rear, you see the battery. Nice. So plug that back in. <coughs> so if we open this machine up, the whiteness continues. It's um, we find out it's a Toshiba satellite, and um, it's really quite interesting. Is this? Um, it's a uh, an Intel Pentium. Kind of looks like um, Haswell era, and it's uh, it's got a wee things there saying, "Hi, I'm Cortana. Uh, your PC is optimized for Windows 10." Free upgrade to Windows 10 included. Smart voice detection for Cortana and Skype. Ultra fast wireless connectivity so you can browse fast, uh, browse and stream faster. Um, tuned and... I, I don't know. Can't read it. Um, but yeah, so this... Obviously, um, well, I mean, at the time, Microsoft was offering Windows 10 for free to all users of uh, Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. So, really, <laughs> let's go, new free Windows 10 upgrade is included. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like how they were advertising features that weren't actually part of the machine. Um, you can also kind of tell that it's from this decade because obviously uh, these kind of pseudo, well, the, the uh, kind of more consumer, high-end consumer audio companies like to, uh, you know, put their technology into computers. So this machine has skull candy speakers. Um, I've heard good things about skull candy. I'm really not too sure. I've never really dealt with them, if I'm honest. So I, I really can't comment. But, um, I mean, I know at the time, <coughs> HP, well, I know a few years back, HP uh, were putting in speakers, you know, apparently Beats, back, uh, you know, based on Beats technology, which, you know, if you remember originally, it was, uh, you know, they came out as headphones, Beats by Dr. Dre. Um, again, something I've never really, well, I've never really dealt with, but in the case of the Beats, I wasn't really too keen on, because... I, 
Well, I, j I just kind of feel it's too much money for, you know, what it's worth. I, b I believe you can get the same, if not superior, sound from, you know, from cheaper headphones. I'm not saying go, you know, go to your local Argos and pick up a pair of Sony headphones. I'm, I'm saying, you know, you could, you know, if you look at some of uh, what Sennheiser does, some of what AKG, AKG does, you know, that sort of thing, you could get reasonably good headphones a lot cheaper than, you know, what some of these other makes charge. Anyway, enough about audio. Let's, um, let's power this machine on and uh, see what's what. Okay. Oh, don't like that. Power button, it's, it's quite spongy and it's got quite a lot of spongy travel before you actually, um, before it actually actuates. That's not nice. So this machine runs Windows 8.1, um, which is um, quite interesting. I was actually asked if I could install Windows 10 and Microsoft Office on it. So that is actually what we're going to be doing today. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, well, we're going to plug in some Ethernet. And... Yes. Treat it as a home network. And, um... We'll, we'll take a look at uh, system. So, if I, uh, if I have a look at this... Um... If I have a... So this... I can see it's got an Intel Pentium CPU N3700 at 1.6 gigahertz with 8 gigs of memory and it's got a 1 terabyte hard drive. Um, now for a 1.6 I've got to say this is awful quick. It's certainly starting up. So I'm I'm really quite suitably impressed with it. Anyway, enough enough blather. Let's um let's dig out my uh, Windows 10 USB drive. Now, before I do go crazy on the Windows 10 upgrade, um, I think that um, there's a couple of housekeeping tasks. Well, just the one really that I need to take care of, and that is this McAfee Li Live Safe or Live Safe or whatever it's called. That needs to die a horrible, painful death. So. Let's uh, let's see if we can action that now. McAfee really is is no good to be honest. I'm I'm sorry and all that, but but it just isn't. Seriously, it's terrible. Um, it's got very low scores for antivirus, and yeah, you know, I mean this this is something that I don't like is when computer manufacturers install trials of terrible antivirus programs. And I just think it's not necessary. I mean, I don't think it's done as much nowadays. And I certainly know that, uh, at least with uh, some of the Norton ones, um, <coughs> at least for some of the Norton ones, it's uh, just you just get the installer put on the desktop, you know, and you can delete that, not a problem. Um, and I'm starting to think that the um, McAfee stuff's not really installed, but, uh, you know, I just, I just want to, I just want to delete everything to do with it, because there's, there's no need for it to be here. So, that's what we're doing now, we're just, we're just going to get rid of all that junk. So I'm guessing this is just kind of going through the motions, removing what it can find. 
Um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see if uh, if this program can remove McAfee Live Safe or whatever it's called, or if I need a newer version of the McAfee removal tool because I have had to upgrade my Norton removal tool as of late. So this is taking its time. I am interested to know what hard drive is in here. I wonder if it's a solid state hybrid drive. Although judging by the um, the depth of this machine, I, I'm not sure it would be. It's quite a thin machine. Seems to me like it would only accept something like a a uh, 75 millimeter drive, though I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Removing product VS. Well, thanks. Good news, everyone! The McAfee terrible piece of software is gone. Anyway, so now that that's been taken care of, I guess it's time to go ahead and install Windows 8. Now here's a USB pen drive I made myself with uh, Windows as uh, media creator. Um, it has both the x86 and x64 versions of Windows 10 on it and is UEFI bootable. Nice. Just what we needed. And uh, what we're going to do... What we're going to do is we're going to put it into the hole <coughs> and um, now it's saying uh, sleep and sleep and charge is ready. The uh, what sleep and charge? Why? Why why sleep and charge? I, I want to install Windows. I don't want to charge a USB drive. Why why do I want to charge a USB drive? What is this shit? And why is the USB part not yellow? If it's a if it's one of those that charges while the machine's off or asleep. Toshiba, you fucked up. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Let's get to installing Windows. Now, I don't know what, you know, kind of in the way of documents is on this machine, but um you know, depending on how Windows operate, um, you know, hopefully an in-place upgrade will be perfectly fine. If not, what I will do afterwards is go and reset the machine and it'll uh, re-image itself, but it'll, it'll put the factory image, but with Windows 10 in place of Windows 8.1. I quite like that. I think that's quite a, a nifty wee option to have. Now this does take a while. I was actually, um, I was actually at um, the office where I volunteer and you know I was quoting a time of two hours for this to be done but instead it just kind of sat there on installing Windows updates and checking for Windows updates and as it turns out the machine itself had a number of Windows updates for uh, the already installed Windows 8.1 so I guess one thing we can learn is uh, you need to actually have Windows up to date before installing a new version of Windows. See, I was going to actually do a Windows 10 Creators Update installation th uh, video back when it came out, but uh, I never did get around to it, so um, I guess we'll make this that video, especially as we're upgrading from... 8.1 rather than upgrading from the anniversary update Again, this is taking quite some time But I guess I just have to remember that You know despite the fact that this thing can start Windows before I've even decided I need to switch the machine on It is still only a 1.6 
All right, well, what we'll do is we'll download and install the updates. Excellent. I, I prefer to do that even though it takes longer because what you'll end up with is, you know, an updated Windows installation out of the box, so to speak. Mostly anyway. I mean, obviously there's going to be some updates that it needs to get af after install time, but, uh, you know, st I certainly still think it's a good idea to check for updates as you're installing. Especially now with, um, you know, the the recent ransomware attacks. I mean, obviously at the time of recording, there's been another one for um, that's apparently originated from the Ukraine. And apparently Michael uh, Fallon is saying that he's going to use drones, uh, drones to, uh, yeah, he's going to use drone strikes to try and uh, counter cyber security uh, violations. <laughs> How are you going to do that? <laughs> Why? What are you doing? What's a drone gonna do? I mean, sure you can track down people with an IP address, but I mean, these people will be probably working using the deep web and, you know, they'll have their IP masked using the Tor network or, or something similar or what have you. What the hell is a drone strike gonna do, Fallon? Seriously, it's asinine. And where, where are we going to get the money for this? Where? Th there is none. You, you keep telling us there's magic money tree. And yet you've just found a billion pounds to give to the DUP to prop up your sorry arse excuse for a fucking government. So, we're at the uh, license agreement screen. Let's accept that. Um, and now it's going to check for updates, obviously. So this is going to take a while. So if you're doing this on your own machine, um, why don't you go and make a cup of tea? In fact, why don't you go and actually grow some tea plants, cultivate them, you know, and <laughs> go and source the water yourself, purify it, and milk a cow, and grow some beet, uh, sugar beet, and, and yeah, you, you get the idea. Because this will take a while. So I will be back once it's uh, done checking for updates. The last time it did this, uh, the last time I had it do this, it just kind of stayed on checking for, checking for updates for basically an hour at zero percent but now it's actually moving on hopefully this machine's been updated enough to where i can actually start committing to the windows 10 install so we're finally at the next stage <clears throat> selecting what i want to keep and what i want to install so Ready to install, let's zoom in. Um, you won't be able to use your PC while Windows installs. Save and close your files before you begin. To recap, you've chosen to install Windows 10 Home, keep personal files and apps. That seems absolutely fine to me. And now we're getting started. This it's going to take some time, so I guess it's time for another cup of tea. Okay, so apparently there was more updates to install, um, so I don't know what's going to happen now, but uh, hopefully, um, hopefully we're actually going to be going into Windows 10 setup. Now that's a good sign, command prompt window flashing for a second there. And here we go. Um, working on update again this is gonna take a while hopefully I've, hopefully this will work I have had a few machines where I've done in place upgrades where it's not worked in the slightest and I've had to reformat them and you know all that good stuff um, kind of glad that I've taken this machine home to uh, 
to actually work on it because you know trying to work within a limited time frame window doesn't really kind of it doesn't really uh, give me time for any problems to rear their ugly head and for me to sort them out um which unfortunately you know it's it's kind of one of the kind of one of those things that um it happens when you're doing in place upgrades on on your computer it's um i mean where where i can i mean Upgrading, in-place upgrading from one version of Windows 10 to the next shouldn't be a problem. But yes, I have had issues upgrading from the anniversary to the creator's update on at least one machine. It was um, a Sandy Bridge. It was an, an Asus H61 board um, with a Sandy Bridge Cod i3-2100 in it. Um, and that machine, it uh, kept reverting itself back to the previous version of Windows and eventually what I had to do was uh, wipe it and start all over again with it. Which, uh, you know, I mean, for, for a rolling update, I shouldn't have to do that. But, um, you know, I, I could, you know, if, if this came up with problems, it wouldn't have surprised me, because I have had problems trying to upgrade from Windows 8.1 to 10 before. But we'll just see how this goes. Um, so, like I said, again, this is going to take some time. Um, so, you know, I might just have a wee shot of Grand Theft Auto or something. Um, yes, it can take that long. <laughs> so, I'll be back um, once we're... Uh, Either at the next part of setup, back in Windows 8.1, or if I completely fall asleep and miss it, the out of the box experience for Windows 10. Okay, so it's now Thursday afternoon at uh, half past 12 pm, and uh, Windows 10 seems to now be installed. To be honest, I left the machine to do what it had to do because it was taking a long time and it was getting late so I thought Ken Fit get some shot eye. But now we're here, welcome to Windows 10. And now <clears throat> we're into the Windows 10 out of the box experience. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the magnifier. Um Location on, speech recognition off, uh, diagnostics off, tailored experience off, relevant ads off. Oh look, Cortana, get lost. Uh, yeah, I, I'll have to have a look to see what um, is actually used. I don't want to use Microsoft Edge. I think the only thing to, that I want to use on here is photos. Hi. <clears throat> We've got some updates for your PC. This might take several minutes. Don't turn off your PC. So these must be the updates that it checked for at the um, other side of setup. And I must admit, kudos to Windows for uh, switching the machine off when it um, when it transpired that um, I might not be anywhere near it. Or rather, there was no response. I kind of like that, you know. So I was basically able to powder it on at my own leisure and uh, completely out of the box experience for Windows 10. These updates help protect you in an online world. The bloody better do. Except I don't believe that for a second. 
And in fact, once we get into Windows, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and install, you know, a few, uh, you know, a few kind of uh, sundry programs that I usually install. So, you know, a vast antivirus will be one of them. We want everything to be ready for you. Well, I would hope so. I mean, why did you mention that you wanted everything to be ready? I mean, is there going to be a, a chance that it isn't? Don't really do yourself many favours with these... Uh, <laughs> These wee statements you come out at setup time. Let's start. And here we go. We are now. We are now rocking the desktop. Yep, you said rocking. With a with a little apostrophe. <laughs> okay, a couple of things that I could do here now. Um, this Cortana search bar, why does it take up as much of the taskbar as it does? We'll keep it as a button. So here's the uh, start menu. So as you can see, looks quite a lot more civilized. Than, um, than it used to. Obviously there's uh, programs and what have you that are downloading from it. Um, well, for it. From the Windows Store. Uh, <clears throat> but yep, instead of having the bloody start screen, we now have an actual start menu, which is brilliant. And this, I think, will take some time to set it sell up and what have you. And no, I don't know why there's two Amazon shortcuts either. What I'm gonna do as well just to you know make it make the experience like it um, like it used to be is I'm going to turn on the title bar and taskbar colours. I remember when Windows 10 first came out and it was like white title bars. Ugh. I mean, I, I dealt with it because it was kind of a minor, it was kind of a minor fly in a jar of otherwise, you know, quite good ointment, but, you know, looking back, the white title bars are just ugly. It kind of looks like all the windows. No, no window can get the focus. It's, it's just yeah. So I'm glad we have color. Yay! Well, it's not grey as it used to be in Windows 8. In fact, it's taken the color from the start screen. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that much better? Um, again, this is still downloading stuff. So, I think uh, what I will do is um, I can check for updates, and I think that's a, not a bad idea, actually. Just to, you know, see if there's any hardware, driver, what have you, updates. And it'll give me a chance to change the way updates are delivered. So, you can go to Advanced Options, um, find updates for the Microsoft product, that's not a bad thing to have, really. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Choose how updates are delivered. And 
and we'll turn off that peer-to-peer -peer nonsense. And even though it says no updates are available, we'll continue to check, you can check it manually because sometimes stuff will come down that you won't be made aware of. Now, Windows Defender has gotten better, but to be honest, the low detection rate makes me want to, you know, use something a bit better. And uh, I only use Windows Defender on my transformer because, well, there's not much RAM or disk space. So, you know, I don't bother with anything else, really. So, but uh, on, on any desktop, laptop, computer, I would always go for something that's better. Right. So that's checking for updates. I wonder if there's a, a different web browser on here, something like Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome. I'm going to have a look. Yep, there is. There's um, there's Google Chrome, and that's yeah, that's that's what there is. There's Google Chrome. Absolutely fine. There's one thing I'm not too keen on with this version of Windows 7, uh, Windows 10 rather, it's that they've hidden the control panel. You know, now, if you, I mean, in the uh, anniversary update, you used to be able to right click on the start button and there used to be control panel there. Um, now, you've actually got to either search for it or do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> start run control.exe I feel like I'm back in Windows 2 2.03 <laughs> so what I'm gonna do while I'm in the control panel is I'm gonna look at default programs yes I know Windows 10 has its own default programs thing but uh, sometimes the old stuff works a wee bit better It's just collecting its thoughts. What programs are on here? <clears throat> so let's set all those defaults. Absolutely fine. Not the problem. And there we go. So we have... Um, we do have Microsoft Office on here. Micro no, we don't. We do have Google Chrome on here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and install, um, you know, the other programs that um, are really needed on this machine. Right, we have some action from Windows Update. Um, you remember me saying that you check for updates because sometimes it might not have detected things that are ready to come down? Well, we have the uh, some definitions for Windows Defender. Uh, the 2017-06 uh, update for Windows 10 version 17.03 for x64 based systems. Um, KB4022405, try saying that when you're drunk. Um, 2016 secure, uh, 06 security update for uh, Adobe Flash Player for Windows 10 and Intel Corporation driver update for Intel HD graphics. There's, you know, there are a few updates that have made themselves known and in fact, I just got a wee notification saying that the computer needs to be restarted um, because in a version of the Elan SM bus driver was installed. So, you know, always, you know, when when you've got a new install of Windows, you know, if you know, even if you think it's updated itself at install time, always check. And um, I love how some of these um, 
tiles have started uh, proclaiming a great app is on its way. And as I've said that, they've all they've all stopped proclaiming that now. <laughs> a great app is on its way, is it? What am I going to get? Photoshop CS6? Microsoft Word? I don't know. Probably more like Candy Crush Soda Saga Asphalt 900 billion Oh look! Some of these great apps are finally here! <laughs> so we've got the news app Great! The weather app Um some deranged hexagonal thing uh, a padlock we we have a padlock here with a with an at symbol on it and and there's there's more great apps still on their way and and then we have um we have a nice little camera logo that's floating in midair and what looks like a busy nightclub i love that when you're on the dance floor and and, and then you see these uh, floating camera logos and and what looks to be a busy nightclub that's that's uh that's really quite something. Yeah, I've just lost all faith in humanity. Well, folks, now I've got uh, all the Nine Eight stuff installed that I wanted to install. Also, um, I've removed a couple of junky programs that we don't need. Uh, the Wild Tangent Games, even though the uh, the game app is still there. Let's uh, see if I can uh, get rid of that now. I like how you can right click on something in Windows 10 and select uninstall. Very mobile phone-esque, but actually really quite a useful thing to have. All these new great apps are here. Um, Candy Crush Soda Saga. Thanks lads. Uh, March of Empires, War of Lords, um, Fallout Shelter, and um, Asphalt 8 Overdrive. Now, um, I think already I can, I can delete that, and that. I don't know if Minecraft has played, probably not, but goodbye and take your ugly brains with you. Now what, what is this other app? Photostatic Collage. Yeah, not anymore, it's not. <clears throat> One note. Well, we're going to be... Uh, this... Keeper, password manager. How about no? Drawboard PDF. I've installed Acrobat Reader on here. So, yeah. So, we've got rid of a couple of bits more junk. What I think I'm going to do now, because uh, I do believe everything else has been installed, is to install Microsoft Office. I actually managed to uh, find a copy, cheap, a license key. So, we're going to use that. Before I do any of that, however, I did get... A nice wee notification that um, there's some software updates available. Now, I'm not sure how to feel about these uh, update programs that you get for laptops. And uh, even desktops, I would say. The problem is that um, they are very useful at actually collating together all of the uh, drivers and software updates that are available for your, dri uh, for your device. And installing them 
However, I have heard that a lot of these programs tend to be susceptible to malware and or even contain malware, so it's, um, you know, and, and that I shouldn't use it. Anything like this. Um, it's a difficult call, but um, and for this, in this scenario, I think I'm going to actually use it. It's not a bad thing, I don't think, to have. So let's have a look at what updates there are. There was a couple of McAfee ones, but I've uh, told it to ignore them. So what we have is um, uh, satellite C slash L5 star dash C BIOS update, uh, satellite C50 C, uh, satellite L5 DC BIOS Win 530, uh, Toshiba Service Station, that's the program that we're currently using. Um, and it's not let me... Uh, it's not letting me scroll anymore. But at the same time, it doesn't actually seem to be downloading. So maybe a new version of the service station would be quite a good thing. Um, but there was um, a couple of uh, driver updates that um, update to the Windows 10 editions. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we might get... Uh, a wee bit more performance out of the machine. So, who can tell? Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is just let this download in its own time and I will be back. So now I think we're ready to do the updates. Uh, the battery should be full. I've been running the machine from the mains. So, um, Let's see if we can do some updating. I forget what Temporal actually does. But, um, yeah. I should know. I mean, I've, I've owned a fair few Toshiba machines, actually. You know, even some modern ones. Well, kind of pseudo-modern. The most up-to-date one I owned was an L300D. Whoops, sorry about that. If it hit the tripod, because I'm a bit of a lunatic. <coughs> um, right, okay, that's done. Software updates. Please install remaining updates individually. Right. Some updates may have uh, not have installed correctly. Please reboot your system. Blah, blah, blah. So, what now? I guess. Right. I guess we'll install... That, that actually would make sense to install the BIOS update. Um manually and individually <coughs> okay BIOS when uh, do you want to upgrade the BIOS why not now again um, I take no responsibility for uh, any loss of data damage to equipment loss of equipment hairstyles, career prospects, and just about anything else that may or may not result from the um, updating of your BIOS. Warning, you're about to update your system firmware. Before continuing, please save your work and close all other applications. When the program is running, 1. Do not put the system into standby or hibernation. Do not launch other applications. Do not press the power button. Open, close, lead, dock, or undock the system. Um, insert or remove USB or 1394 or any other device. Click OK to start or cancel to return to the main window. Right, OK. Well, the machine is going to restart. I kind of had a feeling that that was going to be the case. be interesting to see how this update takes place.
Oh, here we go. Um, loading from BIOS, loading BIOS from energy file done. Current BIOS name, model name GLX. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, system BIOS version 1.00, BIOS image version 5.40. So this is uh, this is going to be quite an update, actually. So hopefully, you know, if there's any idiosyncrasies that are, uh, make themselves known on this laptop that I've just not seen yet, hopefully they will iron themselves out and um, the machine should run a wee bit more pleasantly. Again, this machine is being powered by both the AC adapter and the battery. I know how much of a headache it can be to update the BIOS when your system does not have a battery and <coughs> Dell Latitude C-Series machines. But it is a good uh, fail-safe mechanism to have, you know, if you've got a full battery and you're powered by the uh, power adapter then you know should anything go wrong with either of the power sources hopefully you'll have the other one. Oh, start EC update hopefully you'd have enough oh there's always been a wee bit ominous machine will just power off without ceremony after a BIOS update is done. I mean, I know why it does that. Right, hopefully I've not unged the machine. That is not good. Ugh. Oh. Oh crap. Okay. We're getting somewhere now. I don't know what just happened there, but I didn't like it. <laughs> So we've not quite wrecked this machine yet. Let's um, let's see what else it's, uh, Toshiba, Toshiba Service Station has for us. Oh, apparently uh, Windows Settings couldn't finish installing updates. Disgraceful. Ah, now that's interesting. Um, there was a couple of BIOS updates. I think one was for Windows, the other one was, I think, running it in, well, just kind of running it before the operating system starts. So, the other one has gone now, so that must have been what it was, different ways of flashing the BIOS. I will say though, I will say, flashing of a computer's BIOS, I remember when it used to be something that you just didn't do. You only did it if you absolutely positively had to. Now, it, now it just kind of seems like something that you do, like, oh, updating Windows, I'll update the system BIOS. You know, it's just... It's, it seems quite strange how how blasé uh, OEM update programs has, have become about that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, there are times when a BIOS update is needed, and especially if you're going for a brand new architecture, like, uh, like certainly um, AMD's new uh, Ryzen platform, 
you know, the the boards, you know, the the processors, boards, what have you, they're all working out teething problems and as as such, you know, you'd expect there to be bias updates for that. But um I don't know, just just in general, like, you know, when I first started uh becoming interested in computers, you know, updating the BIOS wasn't something to be taken lightly. And I I still don't think it is. There we go. Now, <clears throat> and now the system seems to now be fully up to date. So that's good. What I just did there was just did a test power down and power back up. Just, just to see, you know, how the uh, BIOS update took to the system. You know, and if there was going to be any weird behaviours at startup. Something I am noticing a bit is a bit... A tiny bit of black, uh, backlight bleed seems to be slightly brighter on the left there than it does on the right. So that, yeah, that does concern me. But then again, these machines, you know, slightly cheaper ones, you do tend to get that. I know that um, when I have my Advent 7083 system, that was uh, well it was uh, based on an ECS uh, elite group uh, elite group systems um ECS 331 machine i bought that well we i didn't buy it i mean i had that bought for you know i got some funding from you know my local uh, social services actually for it. it was very lucky but i got that machine in advent 783 uh got it on a friday afternoon used it over the weekend took it to school with me on monday and and already the screen was showing you know lighter and darker areas on the on the lcd i mean they would go after the machine was warmed up but you know the fact that such a phenomenon would develop so early in the machine's life just well was a cheap advent machine really shouldn't expect anything better or different shouldn't have bought that and I, I, I know i'm an idiot for having got that particular one because you know i'd worked at pc world two years prior and i'd seen how the advent machines were the problem children even on the hardware map anyway Let's um, actually begin what I was going to do in the first place and install Microsoft Office. Here we go. Well guys, we finally got Office installed and activated with a uh, legit product key. That's good. So here we are. Got Microsoft Word. We do have the full complement of Office programs and Jings. I forget how <laughs> how light Office 2013 was. It's just white and whiter. Why, Microsoft? Why? I am so glad that they kind of improved the UI in Office 2016. I don't have a problem with Office 2013 or 2016, believe it or not. Um, although I have had some funky behaviour from Outlook, and that's the first time I've really had any major, major problems with Outlook. So, yeah, probably want to sort that out, Microsoft. But uh, Office 2013, it's been rock solid. Like I said, the only real bugbear I had with it is it's just that it's all white. I know, I know you can darken it a wee bit, or you can move to the... Uh, a darker theme but that kind of takes away all the color and I, I don't like that anyway but um, yep here we are um, my colleague did say that um, you know he used PowerPoint an awful lot so um, you know I've put a shortcut to that on the desktop as you do and uh, there it is PowerPoint 2013 So, that's all that sorted, <clears throat> and the machine is, well, it's pretty much actually uh, sorted out. However, there is one thing I do wish to do before I wrap up this video, 
Now, a lot of people don't like Windows 10 because of the telemetry. And to be honest, who can be sure what exactly they're uh, getting from us? I know they say that they just get a wee bit and they've, they've uh, put more granular controls on what you um, on what you want to allow um, the operating system to share. You know, as Windows 10 is uh, being more and more updated. But, you know, for those of you who are still, you know, not too keen on the idea of telemetry being taken, there is a way you can uh, solve that. Uh, well, there's a few ways. But the way I go about it is uh, usually with uh, SpyBot Anti-Beacon. And this is something I've installed on the um, office machine to, uh, where I volunteer as well. Um, because I feel it important you know, with the Data Protection Act that, um, you know, telemetry be switched to very off. So, how do I sort this out? Well, install anti-beacon. And then, I believe, to get to it, you just go to S for SpyBot. And then go down to anti-beacon. Obviously, it needs to run as administrator. Now, when you open the program, you do get an interface showing all the um, health of um, the, uh, you know, basically showing how well immunized the system is against um, against uh, the uh, telemetry and what have you. So, telemetry host services, telemetry group policy. Consumer Experience Improved Program, improve, Improvement Program, um, Application Impact Telemetry, uh, Steps Recorder Group Policy, Wi-Fi Sense Hotspot Sharing Group Policy, uh, Apps and Advertising ID, Peer-to-Peer -peer Windows Updates Outside Local Network, Sensors, Handwriting Data Sharing. Now, if you immunize everything on this screen, mostly you will be okay. So I'm going to do that. And it's a one-click... It's a, it's basically, um, you know, a one-click uh, way of doing it. Just go immunize. There you go. We're all nice and immunized. Now, there's optional ones that you can do, but do be aware that, you know, some of the services available on Windows, like uh, the weather app or what have you, they will be affected. And, you know, if you've got any app that actually makes use of the sensors, they might not work as well. Um, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, these are some things that I do tend to immunize. So, for example, the web search group policy, I'll switch that on. Um, Cortana group policy, I'm not going to switch on OneDrive, because a lot of people do use OneDrive. And uh, I myself do have a OneDrive account. Um, Bing IPs, uh, again, do not immunize if you use Bing. Now, I don't know if my colleague does, so I'm just going to leave that off. Um, telemetry hosts extensive list um, office 2013 tele telemetry group policy um, and scheduled tasks there's also okay then it doesn't want to doesn't want to enable that one but it wants to enable the uh, 20, office 2016 ones that's a bit strange. Oh well. Um, right. So that's basic. That's the computer basically uh, immunized. Now people do argue that, okay, when you upgrade to new versions of Windows, all that stuff gets turned off. Well, this program is updated, and you've seen how easy it is to switch on um, the immunization for the uh, telemetry stuff. And, you know, it's just as easy to switch all that off again. So, for example, you know, if uh, things weren't working as, as well as I was hoping they would. Um, and why is the telemetry host decided to... Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, you know, if I needed... Um, these to be re-enabled for whatever reason. Um, you know, I'm sure 
I'm sure I could do it. I'm just try to see. Um, now I can show options, and then you know, I could turn any one of these on or off. So there you go. There you have it. This is uh, how to make yourself that bit more secure if you happen to be using Microsoft's Windows 10. It's a good system. I just feel it's got a few too many quirks. Um, sometimes a magnifier will freeze. I don't like that. Um, you know, just, just niggly things like that. I, I really can't stand happening. But um, <clears throat> all in all, it's, uh, it's it's not a bad way to go. You know, certainly, if you've got a, I would say if you've got a quad core machine or a machine, you know, kind of Sandy Bridge upwards, or even you know, even Linfield, Yorkfield, or whatever. Um, or you know, kind of. Uh, Arendelle, what have you. If you've got a machine that's um, either a Core 2 Quad or kind of uh, first gen I series upwards, I would say that Windows 10 will run absolutely fine. You know, people even tell me that, you know, it runs fine on Core 2 Duos. I don't know. Um, I've, I find it can be a bit too slow on, on something like that. And, you know, in the case of a Core 2 Duo, I would say stick with Windows 7 or even Windows 8.1. But you know, for anything 2010 or near, I think Windows 10 should be a good uh, go. I think that should be okay. Anyway, with that said, I uh, think we'll conclude the video here. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the Flying Scotsman YouTube channel. If you're looking for more things The Flying Scotsman, you can also follow The Flying Scotsman YouTube channel Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. To see my latest video, click on the link within the browser window. In the meantime, thank you for watching and please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio bye.